Paleoanthropologists Louis and Mary Leakey were prepared to suffer for their art. For decades, from the 1930s onwards, they scoured the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania for ancient human remains. To get there, they had to bump along a primitive patchwork of roads, dealing with little drinking water at times, and even the occasional lion. But it paid off when 50 years ago this month they announced a new human species. Homo habilis strode fully upright and made primitive stone tools. Its Latin name means handyman. Based on these and other traits, Leakey argued that his two-million-year-old toolmaker marked the beginning of a lineage that led right to modern humans. Bernard Wood at George Washington University in Washington, D.C., tells the story of Homo habilis in an essay in Nature. Wood first laid his eyes on the handyman in the 1960s, and he's been piecing together its place in human evolution ever since. Here's Nature reporter Ewan Calloway in conversation with Wood. Where did scientists initially believe that humans and and their genus Homo originated? Because most of the scientists who were thinking about this were European, my guess is that they thought humans evolved in Europe. Darwin, in The Origin of Species, suggested that it would be Africa, and then at the end of the 19th century, there was evidence from Asia. So the first fossil evidence was more consistent with an Asian origin, um, even though Darwin's prediction would be that it would be an African origin. And like a lot of Darwin's predictions, um, he would have been sensible to have bet on it. But initially, in the early 20th century, most people thought that, that humans, that, that, that Homo, emerged outside of Africa. Yes, I think so. And so when Lewis Leakey went to Alderweire Gorge in the early 1930s and when Lewis and Mary Leakey went there for a more extended period in 1935, they were aware that there were these, these very primitive stone artefacts and the conventional wisdom then, as it is for some people now, is that the only, the only people who could have made artefacts belonged to our own genus Homo. So the logic was that if, if the crudest artefacts were in East Africa, you should be able to find the fossil evidence of the earliest members of our genus Homo. What were the first signs of Homo habilis? The the first signs of Homo habilis was a little scrap of jaw and a couple of tooth crowns. And these would have been really interesting and would have probably been what the Leakeys spent their time on it's just that not long after that, Mary Leakey found the, uh, the cranium of what became known as um, Zinjanthropus, this strange creature with a small brain, a, a large flat face, such a dramatic find that I think it put uh, the little jaw and the couple of tooth crowns in the shade. But then a year after the Zinj discovery, they started to find the fossils which were the basis of their announcement that uh, they thought they had found the toolmaker. So these were fossils that had a larger brain and hands and feet that were, they thought, remarkably modern human-like. So Zinj had a relatively small career as the maker of the, of the stone tools from Olduvai, and um, um, he was replaced in 1964 by Homo habilis as the toolmaker. So what made Homo habilis a human ancestor? They thought that the hand was the sort of hand that was capable of making stone tools. They thought that the, uh, the, uh, the skeleton of the foot was consistent with the creature being a biped, like us. They thought even though the brain was a lot smaller than ours, it was at least on the way to becoming the, uh, the large brain that you see in later members of our genus. You know, it was there. It was a better candidate for belonging to our genus than, uh, than Zinj. You know, they decided that, uh, that this was the earliest member of the genus Homo, the maker of the tools. You've, you've now spent much of your career uh, studying these same fossils, studying Homo habilis, What have you made of it and its place in relation to other humans? It began to strike me that that Homo habilis in general wasn't as modern human-like as it had been made out to be. And so 
my prejudice was that uh, that Homo habilis had some of the features that you see in later members of our genus, but it lacked some important features that, that you would want to see in the earliest member of our genus. So we came to the conclusion that, that, um, that Homo habilis probably wasn't as good a candidate as being the earliest member of our genus as it was made out to be originally. Taking a step back, can you talk about how Homo habilis has upended our view of human evolution over the, over the past 50 years? The importance of it was that it, it moved the spotlight from Asia to Africa in terms of the origin of the genus Homo. There are various research problems in human evolution, but the one that really catches the imagination of the public and of, of researchers are the problems of origins. And that, I think, is a, is a quest and a search which is very compelling, and it's continuing now. That was Bernard Wood talking to Ewan Callow.